Well, good morning, and I am incredibly, incredibly um, um, excited about uh, interviewing Timothy Presley. Uh, Timothy is the son of the man who created Balanced Literacy. Timothy has is a co-author of a new book, uh, the new edition of the book that's coming out. And let me put that up on the screen for a second. Let's see if the technology works. There it is. Reading Instruction That Works, The Case for Balanced Literacy. And uh, this is the fifth edition, folks. And um, um, basically, we're going to uh, run through some questions with Timothy, and I'll, uh, I'll go over those in a minute. But right now, I've been talking too much, and he hasn't been talking at all. So, Timothy, uh, a couple of things. First of all, tell us a little bit about your background, and then tell us a little bit about the book's background, and then we'll get into questions. Okay, so it's all you. All right, sounds good. Thank you for having me. Um, so obviously, yes, I am Michael Presley's son. So I grew up around reading quite a bit. Uh, my dad was very passionate about reading and uh, making sure books were around our house. Um, and so it's been something that's been in my life for forever. Um, my background is elementary education. I got my bachelor's and master's degrees at uh, Texas Christian University. Um, after my college career, um, I went and was a fourth grade teacher uh, just outside of Fort Worth um, at a Title I school. Um, beyond that experience as a classroom teacher, I also have uh, experienced working at uh, Benchmark School during their summer intensive reading program, uh, which works with struggling readers and writers implementing their research-based practices. Um, with So with that experience, my own experience, I realized I missed doing research and I wanted to keep doing research uh, on schools and kids and teachers. And so I went and got my PhD in educational psychology at Florida State which I was actually lucky enough to work under Dr. Alicia Rorig, who was my dad's very last graduate uh, student um, that he produced. Um, I am now currently a associate professor at Christopher Newport University in the psychology department and also teach in our master's in teaching program. Um, my research uh, has focused on effective teaching and highly effective teaching practices uh, developing into a highly effective teacher, uh, being, developing into a highly effective teacher. Um, but more recently, I've shifted uh, during the COVID pandemic. I've really looked at how the pandemic has impacted teachers' burnout and their well-being. And so that's really where I've, my focus for the last couple of years. Um, I've also am lucky enough to be married to a teacher who is completing her 14th year, um, my wife, Stephanie, she is currently a reading specialist at a local middle school, um, but has over 10 years of experience at the elementary level. And I would not have been able to uh, get this fifth edition done without her help and uh, her insight into what is going on in today's classrooms. Okay, so we're gonna be hearing then about uh, some classroom-based things, getting the updates, uh, I'm especially worried about some of the uh, straw men that have kind of developed over time, uh, uh, especially recently, saying what balanced literacy is. And basically, it's kind of, oh, it's just liking books, and that's about it. Uh, there's a whole ton more than that to it. Uh, so I'm going to um, read a little bit from your pre preface of your book, and it says, um, we make it uh, very clear we stand with SOR. Uh, the cover of this book states the topic is balanced reading instru uh, instruction, a term that has recently become associated with meaning emphasis or whole language approaches. I urge readers not to make that assumption. Okay, so don't, uh, I'm going to read between the lines here. Don't use strawman. As this book does not fully support meaning based whole language or skills based instruction. It pulls research from many components required of reading and presents the most effective approaches based on reading. And my personal uh, readers know that I'm one of those people that say, look at all the research, and that's just what you've done. We believe this book aligns with SOR because of all the components are backed by science and encourage teachers to find the balance. 
So I'm going to go into my first question question, and that is, what evidence do you have that balanced literacy is research-based and pulls on many components required in reading? And what on earth would balanced literacy look like uh, in a classroom? So I'll just start off by saying, um, when my dad first wrote the uh, first edition of this book and the couple editions after, uh, before he passed, his wording of balanced teaching was not, at the time, it wasn't associated with whole language. Um, and he used the word balanced teaching because he understood the important research out there. And he knew that research was not one-sided or the other. And so his ultimate goal with this book was to, I'm going to put the research out there, whether it's one, whether I agree with it or not, I'm going to present it to um, the teachers and um, make sure that we, it's all out there for them to make the decision and to understand that there are some advantages and disadvantages to every single approach. Um, when I came into this fifth edition, um, I put it out there that I didn't have an agenda. I'm not for or against any particular uh, approach. My goal, again, was to present the, review the literature on reading that is currently out there. And um, especially over the last few years, there's been a lot of new research that has been um, put out there by some excellent researchers. And I wanted to make sure that this book included that research. Um, my other goal with this fifth edition was to make it applicable to teachers. I read the fourth edition and my first instinct was, this is dense. This is a lot of research. It's important research, but teachers don't often have the time to um, go through the research and uh, figure out how it is applicable to their classroom. And so I hope to try and translate that research for teachers in this uh, edition. Um, so for this book, when I said when I make the argument for balanced teaching, I say this is presenting the research, whether it's phonics, whole language, it's presenting the research and trying to lay it out there of what the best the research says is the best approach to um, reading instruction. Um, I will also say that within this book, um, we cover a lot of different topics. We cover phonics. Uh oh, hello. Fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and with all that, it. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, can you restate that last little piece? We just had a little glitch there where you uh, froze for a second. So oh, okay. just the, your last statement. Uh, I'll. This book covers a lot of different topics of not just phonics, but comprehension, fluency, vocabulary, motivation. And I would like people to know, we understand reading is complex. It's going to have many different pieces in order for students to be successful. And I hope with this book that we're able to present the research for all those very complex aspects of reading so that teachers and pre-service teachers and other researchers can see all of it in one place. Okay. Um, so if readers are interested in what to do, that's all in the book. And if they're interested in the research behind what to do, that's also in the book. So uh, that's wonderful. So any highlights you want to give us either around what a good phonics component might look like or uh, around what a good comprehension components might look like uh, in, in a balanced literacy classroom? So I'll start with phonics, um, and I state this in the book that um, when it comes to phonics, decoding is going to be very important, and any effective decoding instruction needs to be flexible enough to permit students to use a an approach or different approaches that work for them. Um, I In some of the phonics approaches that we cover, we talk about um, decoding by letter sounds, but also by analogy. And that's something I uh, worked with uh, students at Benchmark School uh, when I was in college. And we give examples in the phonics chapter from Benchmark Schools of students using uh, 
words that they know and the sounds that they know and to uh, decode words that they don't know. Um, it also, we believe that, yeah, you, there is the, 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 the actual phonics part, but you can use the um, other context to kind of confirm that there is um, an understanding that maybe leans more onto like kind of helping with the comprehension, but they can all work together um, in a sense when it comes to the phonics. Um, so I would say there's no, with phonics is not gonna be the only aspect that makes a good reader. And I wanna make sure that's clear that um, readers of the book, I think would see that as well. But in, in the end, the phonics needs to be flexible enough for the student to use what's going to be best for them. Okay, well, that that's a perfect segue into the other half of it. And that, uh, you know, so fit, make sure the student has access to the kind of phonics that's going to help them make sure teachers are able to teach that uh, kind of phonics, whatever that might be. Now, talk about comprehension a little bit. How does all that, where does all that fit in then? So... In the comprehension chapter, we talk about all the different aspects that teachers might consider bringing into uh, helping students comprehend uh, some reading material. Um, it's not just going to be providing background knowledge, but rather we present uh, different approaches such as having detailed discussions with students, having them make predictions about the text that they're about to read, uh, teaching them important vocabulary prior to reading, um, teaching them what that vocabulary means, pointing it out in the text give, so they, they get some context. So when they come across it, they can uh, have a better comprehension of that word. Um, teach students to ask the question why um, when they're reading. Um, other aspects I we talk about in that chapter include uh, making sure students are reading a variety of texts, not just one type of text structure. Um, finding texts that are, are motivating to the student, that uh, students are going to find interesting. I know I've seen students who have really been weak readers or don't like reading, but once they actually have a topic that they're interested in, yeah, it, it often catches their eye and Next thing you know, they, they are uh, more interested in actually reading and it helps with their comprehension as well. Um, we talk about integrating the reading and writing and how that goes well together um, are all what different ways that we've talked about helping students comprehend and all these approaches. We've, we have research that backs up um, these approaches when working with students. So if someone were looking for a uh, collection of research-based things to try and, or things to do in reading, uh, your, your, the newest edition of this book would provide that. And uh, it's music to my ears that you're talking about. You know, this is a uh, fit the instruction to the child and no two children learn the same. So fit the instruction to the child. Uh, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to buy my new, uh, I haven't yet, that's terrible that I haven't, but I'm going to get my, I'm going to order my new edition uh, uh, today before this day is up. So uh, I, I I own all four of the other editions, so, <laughs> uh, but it sounds like this new one is going to be a, a lot more teacher friendly. So that yeah. all said, anything else? Yeah, I'd love to share that uh, I had Anna Tabata Barber uh, from the University of Maryland College Park write a brand new chapter for this edition focusing on emergent bilinguals. And especially she focused on reading comprehension and it's a fantastic chapter. I uh, think it might be one of the best chapters in the book personally. She did an absolutely fantastic job of incorporating the research but also providing examples of activities um, and example work. I think she even had her uh, her own child provide some samples and it, it's just so teacher friendly to the reader. Um, and so I think it's an excellent addition to this fifth uh, chapter, uh, fifth edition of the book. So I hope teachers really um, 
I appreciate that. Um, I will all end, and I said it before, the fifth edition, there wasn't a focus on what's right and wrong. Um, I know the reading wars are, are, are back, I guess. Um, I was not trying to support one side or the other. I just really wanted to make sure that the research was updated and it provided teachers guidance. Um, again, I think teachers are the ones that they're the ones in the classrooms. Um, and sometimes they don't have the access or the time to go through the research. And so I hope this fifth edition, um, I, I tried for most chapters, provide a table at the end, say, here are some actual practical skills you can take that are that we've just discussed based on the research in this chapter that you can try out. Is it the, are they gonna be the absolute full list of everything they can do? No, we didn't have room for that for every chapter, but it's at least a starting point for, um, for these teachers. Um, and I hope that it can just make teachers even more effective, even if they are highly effective teachers, that's my ultimate goal. And I know that was my dad's ultimate goal was to have highly effective reading instruction going on in our schools. And, and that's really what I want um, when it comes to the reading. And understand, I understand that reading is really complex. Um, and I hope this is just a really great resource because our kids need it. I know I am a, a father of a, a three-year-old and I hope that when she makes it to kindergarten, first grade, and and beyond, that she has teachers who are implementing research-based practices that we know are effective rather than just practices that they found off the internet and are hoping work, work or based off a program that isn't research-based. I really hope that she has the is lucky enough to have a teacher that has uh implemented some research-based practices. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, uh, you've, among other things, convinced me uh, that I'm getting the, uh, you know, I'll put aside my other four editions and uh, get this new one, Reading Instruction That Works. Uh, and there will be links in the blog uh, to the book and links in the blog to uh, yours. Now, there's one last thing uh, that's always a part of a Bomberito interview, and that is the Zoom wave goodbye. And the way that works is we wave to each other and we say goodbye. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, boy, uh, I'm I'm getting off this interview and going right to the Internet and, and getting my copy uh, of, of this newest edition. Uh, the teacher friendly edition. Okay. And uh, uh, thank you again. So let's give that zoom wave goodbye. Okay. And that's a wrap, I think. <laughs>